Hello everyone, welcome to New Bear. Today's video is a tad along to my new pattern called Frankie. Before we get started, I just want to mention that all of the techniques used in this pattern have a detailed video explaining how each particular technique is done. So I'm not going to give full explanations today. There are links in the description box for each video if you need help. There's also a link to the pattern in the description box. You're very welcome to leave a message or any questions in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So I am very excited about Frankie. You guys have a decision to make. My pattern has four rows. But the challenge, if you choose to accept it, is to design and work a fifth row. So it doesn't necessarily need a fifth row. I'm going to leave mine as is. But if you do work a final row, remember to add your joining picots as you work row four. I really hope you enjoy it. Let's go. Round one consists of rings only. Now, I like to use the magic thread trick to hide my tails, which is what my yellow loops are for. That means I need to plan ahead and look at where I need to place my loops. You can sew your ends in if you prefer. Wrap your hand for a ring. We're working three, pico seven, pico seven, pico three. As I mentioned before, I'm going to pop my loops in and if you want a detailed video, that link is in the description box. And close your ring. Turn your work slightly to the left and set up for the next ring. We have three. We're joining back to the previous ring. We have seven, pico seven, pico three. Repeat these steps until you have four rings and I'll be back to complete the fifth ring with you. We need to join our last ring back to our first ring. We're going to do this by making a folded join. So we take the first ring that we made and we're folding it up so that it sits alongside our thread. Take your crochet hook, come up underneath the picot reach over and grab that working thread and pull it through. Pass your shuttle through the loop. Now if you are using magic thread, the magic thread loop needs to go through this loop as well. Just your threads and finish out the last three stitches. I'm going to cut my thread. We tie our threads at the back with a square knot. So 
So I'm going right over left. And left over right. Hiding our tails. As I said, you can sew them in or you can do the magic thread trick. I like to use quilting grips to hang on to my magic thread. It just gives me a better grip. That's round one. In round two we're making pointed chains. To start we're going to lock join to the pico that sits between the rings in round one. We're using the same pico that joins our rings together. We're going down through here. So go down through that pico. Pull up a loop. and run your shuttle through. Set your hand up for chain and we're working 10. We're ready to make the pointed part of our chain. Loop the thread from your shuttle around your ring finger and back into the pinch. Work the next double stitch making sure the first half of our stitch sits right up against the last stitch we made. Pass your shuttle through the loop. We need to tighten this loop, so hold on to your stitches and pull the core thread until the loop disappears. So we're pulling on the thread that comes out from our last stitch to pull that loop up. Pull this quite firmly. We want our stitches to be snug and sit evenly. Hold on to your stitches again and pull the shuttle thread down until this loop disappears. first half of our next stitch needs to sit behind the last one that we made. Make the second half and finish out our count of 10. Lock join to the next P. 
There you go. repeat the chain all the way around till we get back to the start. To finish round two take the core thread back through the first pico tie your square knot and get rid of your tails <music> we're making thrown clovers we have shuttle one and shuttle two we need to lock join to the center pico in round one we also want our work to sit behind row two so we're going to fold our pointed chain down out of the way go down through that pico and make your lock join set your hand up for a chain and work our chain of 20 we're ready to make our clover sit shuttle 2 down take shuttle 1 from the chain setup and use it to wrap your hand for a ring. We're working ring A. We're making three pico eight pico four. Because we're making a clover, we don't reverse our work. Instead, we turn our ring slightly to the left and set our hand up for ring B. It's important to make that first stitch sit as closely as we can to ring A. We don't want any gaps between our rings. We're doing four. Joining back to ring A. Doing 12 pico 4. Again, we turn our work slightly to the left and wrap our hand for ring C. We're making four. Joining back to ring B. And working eight pico three. We're 
using shuttle one set your hand up for the second part of our chain when i start the second part of my chain i like to make an extra half stitch before i begin my stitch count the extra half stitch pulls my clover in together and gives me a nice continuous curve to my chain and finish out our count of 20. Take your core thread through to the back. So we're going down through the pico where we first started. And on the back, we're finishing off with a square knot again. So repeat that for each petal and I will see you back for the next round. We're making normal clovers in round four. I'm working with two colours. So I'm going to hide my tails by using a combination of magic loops and tatting over tails. Loop your threads back on themselves like so. We're starting with our clover. Ring A is a count of six pico four, sorry, six pico five, pico four. I'm going to tat over my tails for the first five stitches. Work the sixth stitch without the tail, work the pico, and the next three stitches. Now I'm going to put my magic loop in so that it's ready for when I come back at the end. So we're working two pico four to finish out. Our ring. Close our ring. Now normally you avoid using magic loops in rings if you can because you're trying to pull that tail around the curve. It's very easy to distort your ring. But because of the pattern we're going to be using both our chains Four tails already and we have four tails we need to get rid of so we need to use our ring with our magic loop we're up for ring b we're turning our work slightly to the left working four Joining back to ring B, sorry, to ring A. And working three, pico three, pico three, pico three, pico four. And again, we close, but we don't reverse. Turn your work again to the left. Ring C, we're working four. Joining 
going back to ring B. And we have five Pico six. Reverse your work and set your hand up for your chain. I'm just going to get rid of that first tail so it's out of the way. As we start our chain, we're going to be tatting over the chain tail. We have our working thread and our core thread. We're going to reverse our work and use our working thread to make a lock join to ring A on round three. So we're joining to this pico down here. The core thread out of the way. Loosely anchoring the working thread around your pinky will make it easier to catch it with your crochet hook. Place your work next to the working thread. Go down through that pico and pull up a loop to make your lock join. Set your hand up the next chain and we're working 11. Lock join to the pico between rings A and B. So we're using the same pico that joined the rings together. Chain 12 and lock join to the pico between rings B and C. Chain 11, and lock join to the pico on the ring C. Reverse your work and we need to do a shoelace trick here to swap our threads over again to continue the colour.
continue on with our chain. We're chaining five. Make sure your chain is sitting behind row three and join back to the second pico on the chain. finish our, our count of 20. Reverse your work. And we're ready for our next clover. Ring A is 6, pico 5, pico 4. Turn your work to the left. Ring B is four. Joining back to ring A. We're doing three, pico three, pico three, pico three, pico four. In your work and ring C is four. Joining back to B. And five Pico six. Reverse your work and set up for the chain. Working three. Joining back to our chain. I'm working 20 pico 5. So work the repeat until you get back to the beginning. I'm going to include a magic loop in my last chain so that I can hide my tail. I'll see you back here in a bit to finish off. So I've worked my final chain. I'm going to take my core thread through the first clover that we made. We're going to do a square knot. So now we trim our tails and that's it for round four. If you're working a fifth row, I'd love to see your photos. I can't wait to see what everyone creates. I hope you had fun. I'll see you next time.